Hi there, I'm Jake. I'm a park ranger here in the Blind Eternities. You know the multiverse is an enormous space, and more and more people want to explore it. But like any expedition, that exploration begins from a base camp. And finding the right base camp for the type of exploration that you want to do is going to be critical to how much you enjoy this game. New players that are coming to Magic the Gathering are looking for spaces that they can call home. Somewhere that they can begin this exploration of magic. And not everybody is looking for the same thing. Today, I want to talk about how we find a local game store or a local community that aligns with what we want to get out of the game. How do we find that space that we can explore the game of Magic the Gathering? How do we find our base camp? So I think when we talk about finding a local game store, it breaks down into three broad categories. The first is discovery. Finding a space that exists, that does the things that you want to do, and has people that you want to know. It's a really cool thing when you can discover that space that works for you. More often than not though, we find spaces that are close enough, spaces that are similar to what we're looking for. And we can start making connections and putting down roots and making our own space within that space. And that's our second point, is getting involved at your local game stores. Helping the owners host events that are different from what they normally do. Add to the diversity of ways of play that exist at the shop. I promise you they'll appreciate it. And if you can't find a space that works, you can always build your own. You can go into your own spaces, be that online or in person. And that's our third point, is building our own spaces, our own community. Whether that's in your garage or an office space that you have access to, or just virtually online. Creating these magic communities, these base camps to start from is really critical and encouraging new players to find what works for them is going to be what helps this community thrive and what keeps the diversity of Magic players alive because everybody engages with this game a little bit differently and finding the right way to fit the pieces together makes this truly a wonderful experience. So now let's start with the first option. How do we find the right local game store? I think our first option for this idea of a base camp, a local game store or a local space that we engage with the magic community that we can call home is discovery. Try a bunch of different spaces. Reach out to local Facebook groups. Find local game stores in your area that already host magic nights. You don't even have to bring a deck with you. Just test the waters. Show up on a Friday night when they have magic stuff going on buy a couple packs and hang out and chat with people. There's usually a few people kind of walking around. Usually the store staff will help you if you have any questions about the way they host events and kind of what's going on right now. I think there's a lot of ways that you can engage with the existing community around you. And I think we all have a pretty good sense when you walk into a space, whether or not that's something that is really welcoming for you. I'd encourage all of us in our spaces to be welcoming of new players, but the reality is sometimes you walk into a space and no matter how welcoming it is, it's not a good fit. And if you walk into a local game store and it just doesn't feel right, that's not on you and it's not on them. It could just be a bad fit. And maybe you can try a couple times and see if maybe it's a single bad experience or a single person that rubbed you the wrong way. We've all played Commander games with a, a little bit too much friction. But eventually, we can find spaces that are close. Maybe not perfect, but spaces that we can begin to put roots down. Make new friends, make good connections. Find some people that you want to play with and maybe some new formats that you haven't tried before. There's a shop by me that still plays Tiny Leaders. And it's a blast from the past every time I see them 
playing that microcosm of Commander. For those who don't know, Tiny Leaders is effectively Commander, but everything is mana cost three or less. It's a much faster game, you play with a smaller deck, and the games tend to go very quickly. I think it's a lot of fun to play, but it is a little bit more of a solved format. It feels more like Legacy than it does like a, a, a big Highlander format. But as Magic uh, prints more Commander cards, and we see the Commander format get more and more powerful at more and more accessible levels, I think Tiny Leaders becomes more analogous to EDH and Commander, and I think the game is still pretty solid. I'd encourage you to give it a try if you have people that are interested, but honestly, I'd encourage you to try all of the formats that are out there. Give Oathbreaker a shot. Uh, there's a variety of different ways of playing Commander-adjacent games, and if that's something that you're interested in exploring, uh, there's a ton of them out there to look into. And if you prefer the more sanctioned, structured formats, I guarantee you have a shop in your area that hosts those as well. All of the standard, modern, popper, whatever you're looking for. If you explore these spaces, you can find a local game store that's similar to what you're looking for. And again, it might not be perfect, but in the discovery phase, that's all we want, is close enough. Find some discords and Facebook groups that host online events, get involved there as well. You can do it from the safety of your own home, you can do it with digital cards and virtual spaces like Magic Arena, Magic Online, or even Cockatrice, or one of these other um, open Magic Online systems that allows you to play with virtual cards. I know there's uh, virtual tabletop communities that are fairly active in a, a variety of different Magic spaces, and that can be a lot of fun if you want to engage with that remotely. Some of us don't have a local game store right around the corner, and I completely understand needing to find these spaces virtually. But if you can, I think that the structure involved with something like magic is a great way to meet new people. And you're in a public space with a lot of people around and it's, it's generally a safe way to meet new people. As I know that can be very stressful when you are walking into something that is completely unknown. I think we've all had that experience of walking into a shop and having every single face turn to look at you. It's extremely intimidating. And as a new player, it can be difficult to push back against that initial feeling. But I'd encourage you to try. Say hi to a few people. Say hi to the staff at the store. Just give it a chance. Because a lot of the people in these local game stores, they want new players. They want to engage with magic just as much as you do, and they are happy to help. And again, if it doesn't fit, if it doesn't work, you can look elsewhere. And if all else fails, you can always make your own. So that brings us to our second point. How do we build up our local community? How do we make slight adjustments, course corrections, to tailor that community that already exists towards one that, you know, we want to engage with that much more. I think bringing a couple of decks in a new format that you want to try, or working with the staff at the local game shop to host events in different formats or different styles of play. I know a couple shops by me have a speed dating game night where people who are looking to engage with others can come and jam quick games one-on-one -on -one and rotate around the table in a structured environment to meet new people. I know there are places that hold popper tournaments and pre-modern tournaments. Some spaces have unsanctioned proxy play, competitive EDH nights, all sorts of different ways of engaging with magic. I know there's a couple breweries in my area that have specific magic nights and they draw a lot of people that just jam magic games unsleeved on the bars. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun and whatever you're looking for, you can find it. But you have to get involved. Find a space that's close and then start introducing some new elements that you and your circle of friends are interested in playing. As you find those spaces, you put down roots and you start to explore I promise other people will explore with you. And as long as you're open 
to trying their new ideas, they'll be open to trying yours. And honestly, there is no way to stop bad actors from engaging in the community, and the best thing you can do is not play with them. If you do run into somebody that does not fit with the community that you want to hold, you just say no, say I don't want to play with you. And it's a bummer when that happens, and it's not even necessarily anybody's fault, but sometimes people are looking for different gameplay experiences, and it's okay to seek out the gameplay experiences that you want to have. And that brings us to our third point. How do we build our own from scratch? And finally, building our own spaces from scratch. It's always good to begin with a group of people that want to experience magic. And whether that's getting together to play in your garage or at the kitchen table, or maybe it's after hours at work, just in the office space or at school, wherever you can foster that community and start playing magic at whatever level you want. Pick up a couple starter kits and just play some one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe it's sitting together with laptops, playing arena, getting the hang of the game without the paper cards. I think it's really cool to build up a community centered around that idea of community in Magic the Gathering. Building out that base camp. Create a mission statement. Say, this is what we want to do. We're new Magic players. We are looking to engage in this game at as many levels as we can and slowly work our way up to playing at a high competitive level. We are the new to modern Magic players who are just getting started and Modern Horizons 3 was so exciting, we really want to get engaged with this one particular format. Or maybe you've read a couple magic books and the lore is so interesting, start a magic book club. There's a lot of different ways to engage in magic, discover new aspects of the game, and explore that with friends. Build a new community. Finding your base camp. I encourage everybody to discover what magic means to them, what they're looking for, what makes this game special. To me, I think the flexibility of the game and the way that you can fit these cards into so many different formats and so many different decks. I am constantly brewing new things to play, trying out new formats, proxying cards that I don't have just to test them out. It can be a lot of fun. And if you can find like-minded people that are on board with this, whether that's in person or online, I think you really get an opportunity to experience magic at all of its different levels. Find your base camp and make this game better for everybody.